kind of a, a wrap up of my BC trip kind of a quick little summary of what went down well, I ended up getting out there the first week of January I think I my first day of riding was January 4th um, so I think I rode around 30 33 days something like that I missed a couple just because I was sick actually two days in a row and may or may not had the disease that was that is going around um, wasn't that bad if that's what it was um, and then I missed I think one other day because of a mechanical issue minor one but put me out for the whole day and it seemed like it flew by for sure I definitely didn't accomplish maybe everything I wanted to do but I didn't really have any crazy goals in mind um, this year I just wanted to ride and stay healthy which I, I did no injuries this year other than just you know the odd bump and bruise but that's that was great that was a big accomplishment because usually every year there's there's always something nagging you either it's an injury from past seasons or the summer or whatever uh, that sticks with you sledding just hangs on and affects you all season but even though I did have a major uh, summer crash on the moto, um, went over the bars on a little triple, um, ended up breaking some ribs, punctured a lung, uh, concussion, and of course that was getting on near the end of moto season, so it was a bit of a scramble to uh, get myself put back together in time for sled season and uh, which was good in a way it really motivated me to get my my lungs going again before uh, heading out west so I put in a, a little bit of work um, at home in my little home gym on the row machine on the bike stationary bike and uh, I think that really benefited me overall just staying injury free and and uh, having a bit of endurance going into, uh, into sledding season. My season started a little slow out there. We kind of just rolled into it, did some tree riding, got back into the feel of things, um, felt out some of the new mods I did to my sleds, which I'm happy with both sleds. They both worked great. Um, the little changes I made, I really liked, and they both held up good. A uh, couple little minor things. I broke a belt deflection, uh, the adjuster screw on my Polaris. It snapped off. I've had that happen in the past. So I actually gonna, I, I started carrying a spare one just in case. Cause that's kind of a day ender if, if that snaps off and throws your belt deflection all out of whack. Um, other than that, I think I did one Schrader valve on a track shock on the cat. Well, I also grenaded a primary on my Polaris and found a crack in the Articat primary clutch as well. So I got two new clutches out of it, both under warranty, thankfully. Um, and, I, and I caught them both before it really wrecked my day, so... That was lucky. Um, it's it's super tough. That's one one big battle I I'm always fighting with is uh, just mechanical stuff. When you're riding that many days in a row that hard, um, it's hard on stuff. It's hard on equipment, and people forget that these things they really are 
really reliable. They've come a long way. Um, but people forget that they're still a machine and anything can happen. Um, it doesn't take much to give you a breakdown. So um, otherwise, no, I was pretty happy with how, how they both worked and how they both held up. Um, in saying that, my last day of uh, riding, uh, we decided to get upside down and do some crazy shit. And I didn't notice any issue with my track on my sled on my Polaris um, previous to this day. Um, and really until I until it came apart, I didn't know that there was anything wrong. I I was on my third and final attempt at a 270 underflip type deal. Um, I can insert the video and you can see uh, see for yourself what you want to call it. And my track decided to disintegrate midair pretty well. You can hear it in the video coming apart. And when I landed, I think it did the rest of it in. And on the run out, I could hear it flapping. So thankfully, I was able to uh, cut that flap off and limp it out because we were pretty deep in the backcountry at that point. And towing was would not have been an option. So that kind of leads into a major thing that I want to talk about. Um, I did a little write up on Instagram after I posted my flip video, which got a ton of ton of love. Uh, thank you for everyone who's commented and sent me uh, lots of love about that video. It's pretty cool. Pretty feel like it's a pretty big accomplishment for me, um, especially being an old dude. I guess old dude because um, I'm not some young buck anymore. I'm 32. Uh, I got a little guy at home. He's gonna be one in a couple days here. Got the wife at home. Like, I'm not out there to do that kind of crazy stuff, but I, it was something I wanted to try. Uh, and everything was right, and I felt like I was in the right right time in my skill level and everything to try something like that. And obviously, I it was in my wheelhouse because I pulled it off after. Uh, only three attempts and um, now I know exactly um, what I needed to pull it off really was just a tweak in the lip after my first two fails which weren't even crazy fails it was just um, the way the ramp was it was not quite perfectly level it was a little high on the left side um, and not level across so it was pulling me up the hill really shooting me up and out and it wasn't quite steep enough um, to get the pop and rotation so oh. after just a short little tweak with the lip um, Braden smashed a straight air flip he actually over rotated his 146 by quite a bit he really pulled that thing and it really came around fast for him um, and just last second like like the over rotation he just couldn't keep his feet on but um, so when we did that I said that looks much better and then I took my stab at it and landed as clean as I think I could have for our landing it wasn't an ideal landing with smashed potatoes and kind of off camber which is why I was trying to kind of get that rotation, the kind of spin, so that I could kind of land into the landing instead of just straight and then flopping down the landing. But it was pretty cool. Um, I'm fairly happy with it. Uh, maybe at some point I'll try and pull a really nice clean one to like a really good downside landing or something. Hopefully, who knows. Like I said, I hadn't got too crazy all trip. We did lots of tree riding, cool gnarly creeks, and that's what we really love to do. Like, we call it shitholing, and that's uh, that's super fun to do with all the all the guys that when you're all rippers, you can just fly through terrain and like 
it's almost like enduro sledding. You're hopping logs and getting through tight, nasty stuff, and I love that kind of thing. I love the challenge of that technical side of it. Um, but I also love jumping. Like, I'm a moto guy, and I have a freestyle ramp at home for the moto. Not that I've hit it a lot lately, but used to hit it quite a bit, and I love jumping. So I didn't get a ton of jumps in this year. Just the way that conditions were um, at first, man, the snow was so deep for our trip. Probably the first 10, 10 days was just insane. Like, I couldn't couldn't get my sled off the ground if I tried. Like, So then after that, um, the snow kind of flipped. We had a bit of a drought got really hard really quick um, so that's something that I, I kind of wanted to speak about because people see all these crazy videos um, of guys doing crazy jumps crazy drops um, these big features that they're building shoveling whatever people don't realize the work and the timing and everything that goes into this stuff to make it happen um, like I said, like the conditions have to be right to do these big, big things. Big drops, you need a very steep landing with good snow. You're not doing a 50 foot cliff drop um, in marginal or questionable conditions. You're just not gonna do it. Um, same goes for crazy big jumps. Um, I mean, that's what makes sledding so cool is with the deep snow, um, you're able to do some really cool stuff and get away with even not perfect landings. And and it's that's, that's what I love about sledding. It's so creative that way. You can just look at a couple bumps on the side of a hill and make a transfer out of it or a drop or a jump. Um, but yeah, so, I only got a few good jump days in um, and nothing huge, but we had been to this spot, me and Cody, and a couple other guys, um, and we shoveled out this rock that was on the side of a hill. We shoveled a huge bench run into it, um, nice and wide, nice and long, and then just built a massive wall um, out of this rock feature. And we took a couple attempts at it each, uh, both fails. Mine was pretty close, I hung on. It came around, but I just landed a little heavy on my side both times. Um, it didn't quite get the rotation. And we knew it was mainly because the lip the lip just blew apart when we hit it. We didn't put a ton of time into it um, in packing and prep work on the lip. So we knew, I knew that was the issue um, and that if at some point I got the chance again to do that, I would put the time in, get the lip right and be able to stick it. So got out there a little earlier than normal, but still in my opinion, not quite early enough. Um, just the logistics that go into getting to these zones, like, um, it's a long trail ride in, um, just to get to the cabin. And then after that, we, uh, had a pretty crazy route to get in there. And that was just kind of our own doing just to have some fun on the way in. Um, anyways, so we didn't get to the spot till almost 11 AM, um, which is a late late start to start shoveling stuff, but it kind of worked out good because now the sun was really kind of beating on the feature and gave us the snow that we needed to pack some stuff and like really have nice snow. So we shoveled probably for about an hour and a half, almost two hours to get this shaped up again. The feature was totally snowed over. You couldn't tell that we had ever been there um, from like two weeks previous. And um, like I said, we shoveled it up. We packed it and packed it and packed it and packed it with sleds and shovels and feet and you name it. We had a good crew of guys, lots of shovels going. Um, when we got the shape of the lip pretty close, 
I brought some some salt, like cyborg salt, and we salted the lip, and that really helped firm it up. We let it sit for probably another half an hour, 45 minutes while we had some lunch, and then we took some, some stabs at it, some hits, and uh, yeah, the rest is kind of history. We played with the lip as people hit it, we played with the lip to get it a little bit better, and uh, myself, Jaden Curry and Braden Adams all pull off uh, pretty cool stuff off the lip. successful day and uh, got off the mountain by getting a late start we uh, we were pushing it in my opinion past the safe time to be jumping uh, like big jumping there's a certain time in the backcountry where in my opinion you should be shutting it down um, and playing it safe because if something bad goes down you're not gonna have time to get that person to safety or to get the help that that person may need, depending on what the injury is. I like, goes through my head like maybe a femur or something like that, broken leg, something severe um, that maybe wouldn't be life-threatening if you were near um, somewhere an ambulance could drive to or you know you could maybe transport them yourself, but uh, where we do these things, where everyone, you see all these crazy jumps and stuff like that, it's, it's deep in the backcountry, you're on your own. Um, yes, we have satellite communicators, but best case, you're gonna communicate with emergency services and get a helicopter sh on its way, but I mean, you're still looking at a couple hours of respond time probably, depending where you are, and depending on the weather. Uh -huh. So again, that's one of the reasons you can't be doing this on a crappy no-fly day, in my opinion, just just for that reason. Um, a heli can't fly if it's no visibility. So, because um, really, you're you're kind of putting your your life on the line if you're not uh, following through safely as you can. We all had a really good group of rippers and uh, experienced dudes that I felt really confident with uh, with our group and our decision making and um, abilities that I knew if something went down, if someone got hurt, if there was anything questionable, like any one of the guys would have um, been able to step up and uh, lend a hand and, and be, a, be a contributor to uh, the solution. I wanted to give a shout out to Matt Doge, um, he's called Free Rider, Free Rider Films. Um, the guy's killing it again this year. Um, his YouTube views are going through the roof and he's gaining a ton of traction. Um, I think it's so cool that an Ontario guy is now becoming very well known in the sledding world um, as a YouTuber and the guy's a ripper and he's given me a ton of exposure and a ton of support um, over my years riding out there with him. Um, so yeah, I wanna give him a shout out. Keep killing it, dude. So, uh, obviously, if you haven't already, which I'm sure you have, subscribe to him, comment on his stuff, like it, send it around because uh, that makes a huge difference for, uh, for the guy. And that's what makes him able to create more content so I'm excited to see what's coming uh, for next year I have no idea what he has in store but I'm sure it'll be cool so on that note um, I've been kind of slacking on my own YouTube channel um, <clears throat> I have no idea how Matt does it with uh, riding all day then coming home and editing all night um, and getting those uploads up every day. That's just mind blowing. Um, I know he's getting good at it, but 
I'm not at that level at all. It takes me a long time to edit anything. Um, and obviously I don't make quite as much effort in capturing content as he does. Um, I had some issues with my GoPro this year. So it's just, uh, it's one of those things, but I, I am planning on making some riding videos, uh, not just talking videos, which is all I've had the past couple. I find it really tough with only having 30 to 35 days um, in Revy of riding to really accomplish big, big things. Um, not complaining, I'm very appreciative that I can get that time to ride, but um, when you want to do big epic things, it takes time, like I was talking about conditions, um, things got to line up, and when I'm only there that many days, I can't just pick and choose um, when I ride or not, so my season uh, definitely is pretty short um, when it comes to BC, but uh, hopefully I'll get in the Quebec trip maybe a local ride in Ontario. We'll see what the snow's like. Okay, wrapping up the video. I'm back in Ontario. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for liking. And um, I see all you guys on Instagram. Thanks for following me over there. I'm getting tons of traction um, on that channel too. So thanks guys. And we'll chat again soon. <laughs>